Keith Simonton, IMDb. Uh, let's talk Oscars acting races and start with what looks like a foregone conclusion. If we believe the experts at Gold Derby, it is unanimous Gary Oldman, including you, right? And it is a stunning performance. Um, you know, one of the interesting uh, aspects of this is you've, which I think counts against Oldman, is you've got a lot of Churchill right now. You got Brian Cox, you know, you've got John Lithgow. And, and again, great performances, certainly not to discount them. There's a lot of, there's a lot of it right now. Um, so I, I think it's a really tough category. Best actor is a tougher category than it has been for a little, little while, you know, like Revenant. Yep. That box is checked. Yeah. Um, this is much, I think this is much more wide open. Although right now again and i haven't seen the post yet it's it's yeah it's still open it's still open you have uh james mcavoy for split in second place and not only do you have him there in second place uh you're a real champion of this performance aren't you i've had it there since we started in september because i think it's a i think it's just it's it's an actor's performance too it is all of these different aspects. Uh, it's, you know, uh, Three Faces of Eve kind of stuff, Sybil. Um, yet there's also um, a, a, a very monstrous core on, on, one, on a few of the aspects of his, of his personality that he explores fully. And um, I think it's a tour de force of, of, of acting. But it's also really good. And I'm a big fan of Split. I was very surprised by it. If uh, if if not Gary Oldman for the win, um, I think that if there's this groundswell for new talent, I think Timothy Chalamet from Call Me by Your Name could pull off an upset. And if he does, he would be the youngest winner in this category. If I've got my Oscar fact, uh, trivia right, so uh, wh who could be the actual spoiler to win? Uh, Tom Hanks, you've got in third place. Hanks. Uh, you know, it keeps getting snubbed year after year by the Academy for these big performances from Bridge of Spies to Captain Phillips to uh, Saving Mr. Banks. And, and, and particularly that Captain Phillips performance, which was possibly his best. Alfian over Forrest Gump? Uh, maybe. Uh, um, yeah, he's, he's been, I think when you're in the beloved category, the James Stewart category, um, people tend to take you for granted, uh, and I think they do. Uh, and, you know, you've already got your award, which is everyone loves you. Um, I think you're onto something there. It, it's also true with Annette Benning. Think about this, Keith. They're both, yes. They've both been governors of that acting branch at the Academy, and I think they're just, it's familiarity. That doesn't bring contempt. They're, they're universally loved, both of the performers. But I think it hurts them at these awards, and poor Annette's never won. We'll get to the actress category in a minute. But uh, 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 Hanks, we, uh, I've seen the post. Uh, you're still a couple days away from seeing it. He's really good in it. He is this firebrand. This is how we love our Tom Hanks on screen. Uh, and, he, of course, he's playing a real-life person in a movie I think uh, could win. And I hope uh, at this point, from what I've seen, will win Best Picture if I can throw my vote in there. Not that that matters. But um, so he could ride this kind of post-wave. But on the other hand, I think the drawback to his performance is that he's playing Tom Hanks. And that's what I think hurts. They, at the Oscars, they want to see a transformative performance. They want to see Helen Mirren become uh, Queen Elizabeth II. You know, they want to see um, Eddie Redmayne become Stephen Hawking. And I think uh, he's given a really good Tom Hanks performance as Ben Bradley. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and he's got the ghost of Jason Robards hanging around, too. Um, An Oscar-winning performance from all the president's men in the supporting race, yes. Yeah, and and not to say that, uh, you know, that doesn't discount him at all. I, but I do think uh, that just the nominee, he's, he's going to be happy to be nominated. Uh, you know, and because... I think they're gonna. I again. I think they're gonna push their chips elsewhere. Do you think Timothy uh, from Call Me by Your Name could win? Uh, there's he's absolutely. And I think you've got to you. And we've seen this a bunch of times. You know, it's the ingenue or the the, the newcomer. Um, you know, the Brie Larson oh, man, out of nowhere. Um, you know, Benino. Uh, what's his name? Uh, from uh, oh, no. Benini. Yes. Thank you. 
Uh, they they love the the fresh face, uh, and he's campaigning vigorously. He's in a couple of movies. He's in Lady Bird and something else too Lady this year. Really good in Lady Bird. Um, so yeah, I, I I I think it is completely and utterly possible um, that he's he's in there. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, you've got Jake Gyllenhaal for stronger in your fifth position. What's your thinking there? Gyllenhaal, because Jake Gyllenhaal is probably like one of our three, and I won't tell you who the other two are, most underrated actors today. Nightcrawler is a phenomenal. Oh, God, so great in that. Yes. He's, he is, I mean, you, I mean, you want to talk about the, and, um, uh, stronger is a great role, but he has been so good in so many films of late. Um, and you know, I, I, I think you get, you build up, you accrete goodwill that way. Um, and that's why I've got him on there. And he's just a great actor. He's one of our most underrated, brilliant really, actors. He really is. Just moments before I saw Nightcrawler at a uh, screening room here in Los Angeles, uh, he was in the lobby. And uh, he and I were talking. And I said, you know, everybody knows, uh, Jake, you're overdue for your Oscars. But you know what you need? You need that transformative performance. You need, you know, to become and body something else. And he went, well, just wait till you see Nightcrawler. I I mean, this might be different. Wait, wait, wait. And uh, he was gone by the time I came out of the uh, screening room with all the other journalists. And I was wowed by the movie. It's just a gem, as you say. But um, I think that to get his Oscar, I, I agree he could be nominated here, but the movie did not resonate in the box office much. Not sure. that that matters these days at the Oscars. But he uh, got great critical acclaim for the role. It's certainly worthy of a nomination. But I think for, for him to really break out at the Oscars, like we all want him to someday, I think he's got to become Winston Churchill. <laughs> Yeah, or you know, the old, the old sob. He's got to have a disability, or he's got to have a you know an illness, or you know. Uh, Speaking and, of Daniel Day Lewis in my left foot and illnesses and, and and all that, Daniel Day Lewis is not on your list, but none of us have seen Phantom Thread yet. I haven't seen it, and and I, I worry. No, nah, I don't worry. I, I guess my reservation is that it looks like a very chilly film, you know, and there will be blood. Anderson's. Uh, other had a an earthiness to it, a a um, almost a feral quality uh, as he can amazingly bring to a performance, or he can obviously, like as in Age of Innocence, bring this almost you know effete, uh, timid. Ass. He's just he's you know he's a great he's an unbelievably great actor. Um, I just haven't seen it yet, and I I don't know how Phantom Thread hits. You know, how it hits the screen. Yeah, and we're hearing different things from the grapevine. We'll be seeing it in about one week. Uh, you know, I'm looking at Chris Rosen's predictions from Entertainment Weekly. He's got uh, Daniel, uh, is it uh, Kalua from Get Out for Best Actor? Yeah. I would yeah. love to see that happen. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be cool. Um, and he's damn good. Pardon my friend. Yeah, he's yeah. Um, So I, I don't know. Jeez, have... I guess you could say, and you know, anyone who's been an elite actor in a horror film, and I guess you could say Anthony Hopkins, obviously for Silence. Yeah, it's a stretch. We're all, we, we've all got to admit to like your James McAvee uh, prediction here. A lot of us are at this point, and, and, and it's I think it's perfectly okay at Gold Derby. Uh, we've got it. We're in the prediction business, but there's a little bit of uh, rah rah that we do for stuff that we like <laughs> that we just put up there. And I think a little bit of that is going on this year here with some of these. Um, well, you know, Tom, in, in, in what what I think is is really fun about Gold Derby is that there are folks that can, you know, make somebody go, oh, you know what? I haven't seen Split because right. right. horror movies scare me a little bit, so I didn't really want to watch it, but it's supposed to be good, so I better. Um, and if that works, yay. You know, then I, I seeing good, great performances, uh, you know, we, we I, I think we want to try and be as right as we can be in competition with, with each other. And um, with the exception of last year, I, of course, have... Um, tied for second uh with the most accurate predictions for the last three years <laughs> i know i know you've been and and, and not just the spirits too you've been uh you know hitting it out of the park consistently so i do know how to play the game but i think that if if um you can get somebody who you might not have thought about um beforehand uh in there hooray 
I, I thought the Indie Spirit Awards that just came out were uh, were very revealing. And, uh, you know, I, I loved seeing the Safdie brothers and uh, Pattinson for good time. Robert Pattinson is another very, very criminally underrated, not as, as Gyllenhaal, but he's also underrated, an underrated actor. He's taken a lot of risks, Some doing some great work. Denzel Washington uh, came pretty close last year to winning again for Fences. I think we all uh, believe that. Uh, and he's back in the running for uh, Roman Israel, uh, an, you know, a good movie, but uh, most people would agree, and probably uh, people associated with the film, that that the you know the, the the shining light here is Denzel, and he's back in the running now. the uh, The movie is being you know widely distributed. Uh, on DVD and getting out there. And, uh, and, and there are contenders like Denzel and uh, Chadwick Boseman for Marshall who are not uh, 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 at, at top of mind uh, breaking out there, but there, but there are groundswells for these movies and these performances. Marshall did, did not do well at all at the box office, of course. But, uh, but uh, Chadwick as Thurgood Marshall uh, in, in, in they're both in these kind of heroic cha championing movies. We've got to to uh, emphasize to people watching this uh, video and listening to the podcast version, and that is that there is a, there's another Oscar race going on that you don't see here in Hollywood on the ground and went to the members where they are seeing these movies. And they're, they, uh, the Marshall DVD just went out the other day. It got to voters before the... Uh, uh, the voting kicked in, as did uh, Roman Israel. So these these are players. I'll, I'll tell you the one that surprised me that you know it did very strongly in August, uh, at least as, as critically, uh, which is De uh, Catherine Bigelow's Detroit. Yes, which it's just not in the conversation, and that surprises me. Um, and I'd like to hear it more in the conversation. Um, I should... think it is more in the conversation, and that's a case of where I'm glad you brought that up because. Uh, doubling back to our previous discussion on best picture we should have added detroit because this was a movie that unfortunately had to be released tied to its uh calendar anniversary of its historical event and yeah. that was august and terrible time for a movie to release but on the flip side what that allows you to do when you are pushing a film for oscars is to just blitz the town with the dvd which they are doing it worked for crash it worked for gladiator it worked for it worked a lot for of movies. help which was also released in august Yes, good point. Very good point. So we shouldn't underrate that. And Detroit feels important. It's certainly about a theme we and, all and care about. Below, I mean, you know, Oscar winner. Um, well, Oscar nominee. Um, wins for Best Picture for uh, her film over Avatar. That's... Yeah, uh, exactly. That's how it happened. Uh, Andrew Garfield, Breathe, is in the race. It's a physical handicap movie. There's a lot of goodwill. He was nominated last year for Hacksaw. Uh, Tim Gray has him in his top five for right now to be nominated. Uh, I had him in my I, – I booted poor uh, Andrew out yesterday for my predictions, and I forget who I put in. It, it, this race is getting a little crowded suddenly. I thought a few weeks ago, maybe a month ago, it was a thin race for actor, but it's really shaping up, and more contenders are really – stepping up agreed um i've heard just uh, so much uh, and i think even reasonably really said um folks decrying that it's uh, uh you know a, a very sentimental film uh and, and i whereas i think that harms it um and i it, and it, and it kind of drags everything down with it and uh, Andrew Garfield was just stunning in Hacksaw Ridge, um, and you know it's a and 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 Silence, which was a tough movie to hold, um, but I I think that's going to be uh, I think that's going to be hard for it to shake. Krista Smith, who just joined us as a pundit for Vanity Fair this year, has Christian Bale in for Hostiles. Uh, and this is a movie I have I have admittedly been underestimating. It did very well at the Toronto Film Festival. Mm -hmm. I mean, the audience is that there. Yeah. It's been um, really under the awards radar on one hand, but yet it's got uh, some of the top Oscar campaigners behind it, and it's a movie that matters. What do you think? And, and you know, Scott Cooper's, you know, has the ability to pull in, you know, Jeff Bridges wins his Oscar. Yep. Crazy. Crazy part with you know, under, under that guy's helming. So it's, 
it's not outside of the realm. Uh, I think the nominations re a reasonable call. Um, I, I don't know how much I, how much love you're hearing for the film. Um, and I, I, I don't, I don't hear it at the top of at top of mind discussions. James Franco for the disaster, I think, is indefinitely at the Golden Globes. Uh, it's a movie yeah. about movie making. Unfortunately, it's a movie about bad movie making, <laughs> but it's a smart film. It's kind of like a you're in on this uh, uh, this joke as a viewer. Uh, uh, it's it's about the making of what is set up as the worst movie ever made. But you know, that was the same thing for the, uh, you know, for Ed Wood, that was a movie about the worst movie ever made <laughs> with uh, the, uh, what was it, Invasion from Planet Nine or whatever it was. Planet Nine's uh, from Outer Space. Thank you, yes. And uh, Atlanta. Course, won his Oscar for that. Uh, uh, I, there's a lot of love for Franco in this town. What, what, what do you think of that? Could he really get in for Disaster Artist? I don't know. I mean, like you said, it's a Golden Globe. I think uh, it pulls in a couple of Golden Globe nominations. It's hard to say. Um, just and in in a, in a different year, yes. Um, I think this year, and it's already a pretty crowded field. Um, so uh, I think there is a lot of love for Franco. I think there's also um, people are still, you know, he's still kind of a conundrum to a lot of folks. Um, yeah. yeah. And but he's pushing everybody's buttons all the time. Pardon? He's, he loves pushing everybody's buttons all the time. Yes. Um, so in a in a crowded year, I I'd say it's it's you know help contributes to his um to his goodwill that he'll take forth to his you know Oscar dump his Oscar win someday. But you know what though, Keith. Uh, He's at every event here in Hollywood. I mean, uh, we see him all over the place. He's doing the selfies. He's working the, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, the scene, and uh, he really wants this bad. And I, I think, uh, you know, there's a lot to be said for that. And he's also campaigning, of course, for the Deuce, his HBO show, for for TV recognition at the Globes and SAG. So he's having a good year, I think. You know, there's also something to be said for people that just work hard, <laughs> you know, honestly, people that show up and do their job and then, you know, uh, and also do part of the, you know, kind of the, the, le the le less savory aspects of it, which is doing the campaigning. And, and there's something to be said for that. Uh, and I don't That's think- how Eddie Redmayne beat Michael uh, Keaton, don't you think? <laughs> Eddie was at every event, pumping every hand, kissing every baby. Michael was not, uh, he should, Keaton, think about this. Should have, if you win Best Picture, you usually win an acting award, right? He he should have won for that. Uh, but Eddie yeah. out ran him at the uh, SAG Awards, and then uh, uh, after being virtually shut out previously, and then uh, ended up taking the Oscar in the in the home stretch. And it was a ground game. And it, I think I think for a lot of these guys, I I do believe that yes, they're doing it for the you know the potential uh, win, and. You know, but I, I think also they're doing it to help the film. Um, and, you know, they do these junkets regardless for good and bad to, you know, and put on their bravest face um, to help promote the film. If you're helping promote the film and you have to go to a, you know, eat some more, you know, hors d'oeuvres and, and canapes and have one drink before you go pass out, you know, on, on your bed because you've been traveling 100 hours a week. Um, that's that's I think people that t take that mantle on, um, good on them. Yeah, yeah. But it's not necessary, as we saw last year with Mark Rylance winning in a supporting race yeah. after not showing up for anything. <laughs> and uh, it was astounding how he pulled off that upset. But uh, campaigning does matter, and and that sets up our discussion for best actress because this is fascinating, Keith. Look at the race for best actress. Uh, the front runners are famous for not campaigning. Meryl Streep, <laughs> Frances McDormand, Sally Hawkins. You won't see any of them at the at the canapé table at the <laughs> at Spago in Beverly Hills. Uh, you know, Saoirse Ronan um, is a bit more visible. Um, wow, where do you stand for best actors? I think we have four front runners. Those four, anyone could win. What do you think? I think it's Francis Mc. I haven't seen the post. Yeah, but I think it's Francis McDormand. Um, there are 
several just key scenes in Three Billboards, uh, which is a movie I love, and um, and she's the reason for it. And if you look at the that performance versus, um, say, um, you know, Marge in, in Fargo, it's a completely different performance. It's a completely different person. Um, and McDormand's been good in so many films for so long, um, almost famous, geez, she's just great. And uh, so I, I think it's, uh, I think it's her year. And I, I, and again, I'm not a, I'm not a big fan of uh, Shape of Water. And uh, I really like Sally Hawkins, um, but I really liked her in Blue Jasmine. So I, 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 I give it to McDormand. And Sally, let's say, you know, was nominated for Blue Jasmine. She was not nominated for Happy Go Lucky, even though she won the Globe. So there's, um, there's a kind of a split uh, signal on her. I, um, I love Shape of Water. I think, uh, you know, you've got, we've got wise pundits at Gold Derby, like Michael Mustaf saying, Sally's going to win. Uh, we have many, I had, I agreed with you 100% on Frances McDormand up till I saw the post. And I might still go back to Frances. I agree that she is the front runner. There's a ferocious defiance in her role and such a pleasure to watch that movie. Uh, it's a real movie. It's it's all from the right places. And it has, a, it has two plot twists that you wouldn't see coming a mile away, even if you had Sherlock Holmes and a pack of bloodhounds uh, ahead of you. And it is, uh, it's so good. Last time I was at an event in Hollywood and uh, uh, I was talking to an HFPA member and I said, uh, you know, they're not supposed to talk to us. Right? And I said, well, what, what movies do you really, really like? And uh, she leaned over and she said, I only have two words for you. And she whispered, three billboards. <laughs> and that was her way that was, she was trying to tell me that that was uh, the early love. They have not seen the post yet. I have seen the post. And so has Peter Travers. And looking at Gold Derby's uh, predictions here, uh, uh, up until this morning, thank you, Peter. I was the only one predicting Mer Merrill, and he's now got her up there. Look, uh, it is just this understated, spellbinding performance of hers. I'm talking about Meryl Streep in the Post now. Is Kay Graham, the publisher of the Washington Post, uh, that she's got three or four scenes, Keith, that are just going to knock your lights out. And they're not grandstanding scenes in the sense of, where um, you know Francis roars and and uh, uh, you know these these uh, Margot uh, you know Robbie in in I Tanya we can talk about in a second as some of these other contenders they all have these big performances uh, Meryl Streep what I love about the role is that it it reminds us of a time when when uh, this nation and this world did not take women's opinions seriously at all and she doesn't take her own opinion seriously in the, in the movie and it's so emotionally honest. And in, in a raw way, it is, uh, it just grabs your heart and rips it out. Uh, and the cheering that goes on at the end of the movie is for her. And uh, there are three times uh, the movie was interrupted at its first Hollywood screening here the other day on the Fox lot, uh, where there were about, you know, eight or 900, uh, eight or 900 of us there, uh, industry uh, folks. Uh, who know this game on awards. And boy, you all of a sudden you saw it, it, it could happen. Uh, yes, uh, uh, the two people I was sitting with, both veteran award watchers said, no, she can't win. I disagree. I'm glad to see Peter standing by me. Don't write her off because I think what happens at the end of that movie, when you look up at that screen, you say, that's my Meryl. And she's won three times, yes. The record is four, won by Katherine Hepburn. But if anyone's going to beat her, it's going to be Meryl Streep. And I could see a day where she wins at the end of her career, six Oscars. Could, if someone's going to get the someday, it's her. Uh, if, if Meryl Streep wins, she gets the nod, right? Because Katherine Hepburn tied. <laughs> well, she tied at uh, three previously, but then uh, with Ingrid Bergman. But no, uh, Hepburn has the all-time record of four currently. But she tied with Streisand so, uh, for um, winner. Yes, uh, Lion and Winter, Morning Glory. Uh, Guess who's coming to dinner and uh, Golden Pond. So doesn't it stand to reason that if Meryl Streep wins and it's a non-tie, that she gets that much more of a fraction over someone who tied? Oh, I see what you're saying. All right, all right. So uh, thank you. So to clarify what Keith, this is, I love this kind of, this is the award nerd conversations we love. It's what totally Keith is saying, nerd. this is great. I love this. You're so evil to bring this up. 
But what he's saying is that is that uh, because Catherine Hepburn tied with Streisand for with Streisand with Funny Girl in Line and Winner, that that counts maybe as half a win or what? A, okay, it's a tie. Yeah. <laughs> I, uh, but you know, uh, it, it was an illegitimate win for Streisand because remember the Film Academy gave her a membership before uh, uh, Funny Girl was even released. And so she was able to, she had had no movie. How was she suddenly allowed to vote for the Oscars when she has no film credits, but she was such a force on the pop culture scene at the time with uh, the Broadway and all these other things and her TV specials that they, they made an exception for her. Presumably she voted for herself, but she should not have been allowed. Those of us who are Hepburn fans like me uh, uh, say, you know, Hepburn was robbed. She should have had it all along. Speaking of forces of nature, I think uh, I think I have her in my fifth spot. Well, uh, is Margot Robbie? For yes. Us. Talk about this. A lot of people love that. I love the, the film too. I like the film, and I, I and I really uh, liked Allison Janney um, as well, and she's uh, in my in my best supporting category, and was very high. Still is. Um, the film. Uh, Craig Brewer, it's 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 good film. Um, I think that uh, anytime you can take an individual as Charlize Theron uh, did with Eileen Wernos for Monster, and make them approachable or at least let you empath empathize with them in a way or sympathize with them, I should say, um, in a way that you weren't able to before. That the, I think the Academy notices that, and uh, and plus. Everyone likes Margot Robbie. <laughs> oh, well, that's very true. But you know, her, here's my problem with it. Uh, I'm so old that I was around when uh, the initial, you know, uh, incident actually happened of the kneecapping and all that. It was I. Okay, and and uh, it was, of course, uh, as the movie points out, and I love the fact that it does give us this wink from the screen that this was really like the start of the 24-hour news channel cycle, where all of America followed something live in a way that we now take for granted. But uh, uh, back then, it was this unfolding drama that we were watching. But it's 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 white trailer trash, non heroic person uh, in a, in a uh, the, the Tanya Harding role, and I think uh, Margot does a wonderful job making her somewhat sympathetic. Yeah. But I think the Oscars are all about. I think she can get in. I think she'd be nominated. But I can't imagine a world where she wins in a role no, where she's no, 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 I don't think so either. But but you know, going into that that film, I thought you know this is either going to be um, to die for, you yeah. know, Nicole Kidman, or, or it's going to be butter, you know, with Jennifer Garner, where it's, it's like, we're going to take a class of people that you don't, you know, that we typically associate with, you know, uh, a, a certain strata and we're going to lambaste them. And if, if you go in for the easy shots, it's boring. Um, and it's predictable as predictable as making, you know, a, a, a that, doing that with an aristocrats or anything else. It's just boring. They didn't do that in I, Tonya. Um, they told the story. I think they fudged in a couple of factors from the, the, the true story to make her a little more sympathetic. Um, but again, I think Margot Robbie's just one of those incandescent stars and they love it when they ugly up and she uglied up. She did. Let's talk about Saoirse Ronan. Uh, Saoirse Ronan, two-time past nominee for uh, Brooklyn and Atonement. She oh. is kind of an understated star. This is a movie that I know you love and I really love too. And it's uh, got enormous passion behind it. Um, talk about this. Uh, I think this, if we're underestimating anybody in the race who could actually win, who could break through here, I think it could be Ronan. What do you say? I mean, it would have to. She'd have to win like the Globe, the, you know, the, some of the critics awards up front. But I could see the momentum building because uh, at the box office, it's breaking records. Uh, pipe in here. Well, I think uh, Saoirse Ronan, it, who is just phenomenal in this film, uh, yeah, she definitely. I would be shocked and and appalled if she doesn't get a a, a nomination. Uh, I think where the sympathy is going to lie where they're going to really put the emphasis on recognition uh, is Greta Gerwig who wrote and directed this thing, made it out of whole cloth. Um, 
and and the film itself, which you know is a sum of its parts, and it's a brilliant sum of its parts. Lucas Hedges, uh, it's it's just um, Laurie Metcalf, who you know also we'll probably end up talking about. It's um, uh, so Saoirse Ronan. It, I would be it would be a crime if she wasn't a best. Uh, the, you know, gets another nomination. She's so dang good in Brooklyn. Uh, and she was, you know, and she's, she's just a stunning actress. And she does most of that film, w you know, without makeup in a um, very self, uh, a, a very naked role in many ways, uh, even though she's making up a character, clearly. Um, lovely she doesn't, What she's lacking, though, is she doesn't have the big plate smashing scene. She doesn't have that big grandstanding scene. It's all this, um, this subtle stuff, but she rules the screen with Laurie Metcalf and um, everybody, everybody loves her. Yeah. Uh, you know, Judy Dench is nominated all the time. She's in back of the running for Victoria and Abdul. Uh, do you think she could make the cut or do you think she's missed the boat? If she gets the cut, it's, it's under the, we love Royals. And if one of them, <laughs> somebody plays a Royal, by God, we're going to nominate you. Um, yeah, and it's a fine performance. Uh, you know, uh, she's you know re re reprising uh, Judy Dench Brown. Yeah. Uh, I and I like the film. I love Stephen Frears. Um, I, I'm just not very passionate about yeah. it. And I think it's a it's a year where passion's going to carry the day. Annette Bening, I think, has that problem too. Where she, in in uh, film stars don't die in Liverpool. It's a wonderful performance portraying an Oscar voter. I mean, Oscar winner Glory Graham. Uh, but it's it's um, a little bit of kind of been there, done that. I, I think it's um, for for Annette to break in big time again at the Oscars and even to win. I think she's got to be, have that transformative role. Which I this and I and I think Annette Benning. It, it, it seems like everyone's talking about Annette Benning in, in the Oscar race before her movie comes out every year. <laughs> we, we haven't yeah. seen twentieth century women yet. Why, why are we talking? <laughs> I know, I know, she's so automatic. Uh, hey, uh, Jessica Chastain, if there's if there's any person in Hollywood that the voters want to give an Oscar to so bad, it's Jessica <laughs> Chastain. <laughs> and Molly's Game is a showcase for her, but uh, I don't know, I just, it, I, I, I don't feel the mojo, do you? I mean, I think for a nomination, possibly, yes, but. Um, yeah, yeah, really possibly good. for a nomination. Um, and plus she's, I, I I totally agree with you. If if I I am one of the legion who would love to give her an Oscar, you know, she's um, she's such a great actress, and she's done so many um, kind of strong and in, consistently independent women roles, um, and is an out you know outspoken uh, advocate, and you know, and just in person, she's like the loveliest. So, uh, but is it Molly's game? I don't know. I've heard I've heard Molly's game detractors. Um, you know, I I, 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 I got the same problem we've been talking. I've been talking about here anyway, and that is she's uh, Jessica Chastain up there, and she's doing a great Jessica Chastain. But it's the problem that uh, uh, what burden is now on these contenders uh, from the expectations of voters, and that is they want to see the Oscars are all about the most, the most costumes, the most sound, the loudest movie wins the noise. And, and they want the most performance. And, and I think while she's really up there in the screen and certainly delivers the most in terms of great wordage um, but, uh, from a great script, but uh, I think they want to see her as uh, uh, you know, some, somebody else. Yeah, I, I'd have to agree with you. Uh, let's uh, let's quickly jump over uh, and uh, uh, wrap this up with the supporting races here. You know, uh, Lori Metcalf, uh, we were talking about a minute ago. I, uh, she's out front for me for supporting actress because I think, you know, she went, she's won three Emmys. She was up, she seems to win everything. And she went up for the Tony uh, recently for Doll's House Part Two, and she won. And I think there's so much love for her. And the, remember, the first scene, the first thing you see, and the last thing you see in Lady Bird is Lori Metcalf. And where uh, I would draw a distinction between her chief rival, Alison Janney, and I, Tanya, and they're both the mothers from hell. But I think <laughs> Laurie Metcalf has a heart in her that we're rooting for underneath it all, as awful as she is at many times. And Alison Janney is just the monster. <laughs> a great monster, but come on. She is just, 
Godzilla. Yeah, she is. <laughs> Allison. Um, if you look on mine, uh, I am still sticking with, uh, for several reasons, Holly Hunter for the big sick. Oh, okay. Tell me why. Um, well, first of all, I think it's this uh, endearing performance. Uh, it's also got that moment. Um, which is in the bar in the, or in the comedy stand-up nightclub when Kamel Nanjiani is getting heckled, where she explodes in kind of this um, unbridled rage, you know, unbridled rage that her daughter's in a coma, that this guy's, you know, um, heckling her, uh, a guy she doesn't even know that well, but in a in a you know racist manner, and I think that has a good chance of resonating with a lot of people right now. And. Uh she is uh, you know, a survivor on the acting scene. I mean, there's, she's got a lot of pluses going for her. And uh, I could see it happening. I definitely could yeah. see it happening. And, 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 and if it was Laurie Metcalf, I'd be just as thrilled. Um, Allison Janney, I got to be honest, the Allison Janney might be the more one note performance because, and, 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 and God bless her, she holds that note. Uh, yeah. You know, up here, she holds that note. But whereas Metcalf, is is it, boy it's for me it's metcalf and holly hunter you know and we saw mothers from hell win in the past uh monique is a good example in precious but monique yeah. did have the one vulnerable you know moment uh the, the don't judge me scene that uh got her the oscar that was very and, good monique imitation tom <laughs> <laughs> really uh, thank you i'll set my oscar now uh but i don't think that um Rich Men you know, Rich is kind of retired, you know. It's I think <laughs> <laughs> Let me hear you, Carson. <laughs> Spoiler, but we think it's a tender moment in the movie. But uh, Melissa Leo, speaking of monsters from hell, the nun, the nun from hell in Noviciate, uh, is of course beloved in the award scene and uh is a favorite of many people to win here and certainly to be nominated. But I I wonder if um if the voters in this deluge of, of DVDs they're getting right now, if they're going to pop in this uh, disc about uh, this nasty nun, what do you think? Uh, well, I, I was really surprised by Novitiate at uh, Toronto. Um, caught it and was, I mean, this is a first time director and I'm blanking on her name at the moment, but she's just turns in a phenomenal first time out, uh, particularly with all the moving parts that are in it all the different characters, the different settings, what could be a very, not to, you know, for, uh, for a plunt pun, but a very cloistered film. It's a, um, it feels very broad and open. It's, I, I was really surprised by it. And, uh, and again, I think the Academy likes it when they're, you know, it's, you know, when there are people that, you know, kind of are more dictatorial or disciplinarian, they, t they, s they seem to tend to gravitate to that. So I think she's got a very good chance at a, at a nomination. Uh, over to uh, Shape of Water, uh, Octavia Spencer is certainly in the running um, and is so great in the movie and is uh, kind of like an automatic nominee these days. But I, I think in a past winner, of course, for the help, but I think that the problem she faces in Shape of Water is that we've seen this before and she doesn't have the big grandstanding moment. So I could see her being nominated. I don't think she has a chance at all of winning. And I think there's a chance uh, that she could be cut, shut out here. Yeah, I, I would agree. Um, I, I thought she was actually one of the minor um, performances in Hidden Figures and still got a nomination. Um, I would have rather seen it go to uh, some of the other ladies in that cast. Um, and I, I, I have to agree with you, Tom. I think this is a um, this is Octavia Spencer given you know a specific role to do, which she performs dutifully, but it's very kind of one note. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> The, one of the big surprises this year is Mary J. Blige in Mudbound, and she's popping up on everybody's list. Yeah. You might be skeptical at first and say, oh, come on, a, a pop well, star singer getting in there. But, of course, look at Cher. Look at Frank Sinatra. They, they've won in the past. The Oscars do forgive you for having this um, uh, this pop music career if you if you impress on the silver screen. And she does. She's a really formidable, uh, formidably impressive uh, star in Mudbound. Can Mary J. Blige be forgiven for being a pop uh, singer uh, to be taken seriously as an actor? Particularly because I didn't even know it was her. 
and and going through the credit was like oh my gosh that was mary j blige holy hannah she's really good yeah she's definitely nomination fodder absolutely well we had people like uh michelle pfeiffer for mother who was early on and then mother didn't didn't uh, track well i, I actually I, liked it that, oh <laughs> it's in my top 20. i i, I recommend it to no one but i think it's it's <laughs> i be loved it I it's like, going to be one of those films that 20 years from now, people are going to go, well, how did they miss Mother? What a bunch yeah. of idiots. Yes, yes. Uh, and, do you, you know, a lot of us pundits have, you know, uh, Hong Chao for downsizing on their lists. Uh, a lot of very smart pundits. And she's great in downsizing. But, of course, that role is getting a lot of lumps for, for uh, being uh, uh, accused of being just stereotypical of the, uh, of the Vietnamese kind of uh, Asian uh, stereotype, but uh, the character is is is, uh, is is so redeeming and becomes so transformative near the end of the film. Uh, what do you think? Could she really get a nomination? We need Asians. We never see Asians nominated. Uh, boy, I hope that's not. I mean, I, I didn't care for downsizing, and um, I hope that's not how we're doing this from here on out. Um, but maybe. Uh, I, I, it's, it wouldn't be a performance I would I would want to see nominated. I would I, just because I didn't care for the movie. I wouldn't want to see Matt Damon nominated for it either. Right. Uh, Christoph Waltz, who seems to you know get nominated if he shows up and you know scratches yeah. his ear. Um, he's not even in the conversation. I was surprised because yeah. he's a big uh, heavy role there. What about Christopher Dot Thomas in Darkest Hour? I love Alexander Payne, and so again, this Venice was very painful for me because it was downsizing and Shape of Water from. Um, movies from two directors that I like a lot and uh, I didn't care for their films this year. Let's leap over to supporting actor. Uh, who do you have in your number one there? Well, <laughs> I'm all alone on this one. Uh Oh, okay. We got, I have Woody Harrelson for uh, three billboards. Interesting. And of course the uh, more of the pundits have uh, his co-star, Sam Rockwell. Yeah. Out front. I Look just, uh, you know, just looking over Woody Harrelson's career um, and everything that he's done, um, this is, I, I think, just a unique character. Uh, he's long overdue. Um, you know, he's been nominated for Rampart and for, you know, so many other films. Uh, the Messenger, right? Um, yeah, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. And he's so just... It, it's just a, um, it's a great role, and I'm going to hold on to him until I can't hold on to him anymore. I said Vietnam. It was, it was probably the Iraqi war, whatever it was. Yeah. Uh, you've got Sam Rockwell on there. Um, the the um, uh, they're, they're both these, just when you think you've got the characters figured out, they have these surprising twists and turns. They're both relevatory. Uh, they're both... Uh, uh, scene stealing and uh, sympathetic in their ways, um, but it's just—I I, I would love to see Woody nominated. Where, where do you stand on Sam Rockwell? You've got him in number three. Yeah, um, and I'd love to see Sam Rockwell nominated um, again. Someone who's been great in comedic roles, from Galaxy Quest to Charlie's Angels to you know serious roles. You know, um, Confessions of a Dangerous Mind. He, he's yeah. been good for a very long time and uh i don't know what the guy's like personally or how he's you know perceived in hollywood but he or oh, gosh the way back uh, the way way back oh my goodness what a great actor um i'd love to see him get yeah, nominated i'd love to see him win we've got uh, just as we have two actors from three billboards in the race here we have two actors from call me by your name and i think this is fascinating army hammer uh really is an, a terrific in the in the film and he has this dominant role that could arguably be defined as lead. Often you win in supporting for, for um, yeah. and Patricia Arquette was, was really the lead performer, right? In, um, and wins in supporting. That happens all the time, if, just to make a, a quick analogy here. But uh, Michael Stuhlbarg, who does not have a lot of screen time, has the scene. He has, he has the, the scene where he talks to his son. I won't uh, say what it, what happens here for spoiler purposes. He has but, the he has the Oscar scene. He right? has the Beatrice Strait scene. Yeah, <laughs> he's got the Beatrice Strait scene. So where do you stand on these two guys? Well, I think Army Hammer is a 
you know, a lot like Rockwell, he has been fantastic in comedies. Um, I, I think the people missed the man from uncle. I, it's a pretty damn good movie. Uh, it's fun. And, uh, he's been extremely good in dramas, um, from birth of a nation, uh, social network. He's been really excellent and he's <clears throat> extraordinarily good in call me by your name in a really risky and difficult role to navigate. Um, you know, you could to, it could come off as a very, very creepy character and it doesn't whatsoever. It's, uh, um, it's, it's a very solid, solid role for, for an That's actor. That I love Army Hammer. I just want to throw in a little personal <clears throat> note here. And that is when I decided to, uh, uh risk my, uh, worldly assets and, and everything else to relaunch gold derby in 2010, uh, while, while in the process of leaving the LA times, I took a year to exit there while I kind of bolstered up gold derby. I threw a big party at the Hollywood museum, spent a lot of money. And uh, uh, gave out some uh, career awards to some veterans in the field. And two celebrities came to the party, Army Hammer and Aaron Paul. <laughs> and, uh, you know, and Gold Derby wasn't really on the map. I was, it, it, it was, it was, uh, it was we, we were, uh, and, and I love the fact that Army was, uh, was there, was supporting us. And when I, a few times I've run into him uh, since then, he goes, great party, great party. He keeps mentioning the party, so. We love you, uh, Army. Where do you stand on the on the stool bark thing? Because he's got the money scene. Well, as as I said, I, I think he's got he's got the Beatrice Strait role. He he speaks a truth that is his truth, um, but which would resonate, I'm sure, with many people in the Academy or in the audience. Um, you know, as Beatrice Strait has a very brief role in Network. But she talks about being a wife who's been shoved aside um, unceremoniously after giving everything. Uh, boy, I think that people people reflect that back with their uh, admiration for the ability to convey that. Yeah. Uh, Willem Dafoe is the current front runner at Gold Derby. Oh. Uh, yeah, by a mile uh, for Florida Project. And uh, this is a real case of... Uh, What's he doing in supporting? If, if he's obviously the male lead of the movie, but uh, I'm not sure he's going to end up there by the end of the season. But I think what is propelling him there is the front runner right now, and he may very well stay out front, especially with the critics' awards. Is I think that uh, what is behind the enormous surge of, in his uh, odds lately, ad admirably great performance, yes. But I think he's just he's got a great role. He's got a role where. Whatever horrible thing happens to him, he's just got this inner decency where he's just trying to do the right thing with all these bad people. And yes. the, the goodness uh, uh, of this guy, I think, is so winning. His character really helps him along. But he doesn't have that big scene. He doesn't have the stool bark scene, does he? Maybe at the end, kind of, not really. What do you think? Tommy really broke up there. So just give me a <clears throat> Yeah, right, so I didn't Okay, so Willem Dafoe, where do you stand on that? Um, I, I'm surprised and pleasantly surprised that he is where he is. Uh, I'm higher on my list. It it feels like a very natural performance. It um, is you know you do end up confusing the character with the with you know the the acting itself in a role, and. I, I I don't know if that's what's going on here. I'm happy if it is. I'd love to see Willem Dafoe uh, uh, win. Um, so I'd love to see Willem Dafoe win. Uh, it's for a movie I that I'm I'm very impressed with, and uh, and a, a way of creating a character that I think is is challenging um, for any actor. Um, and, also working with a director who doesn't necessarily want to have a star on his film um, and, and does so and works with this, works with that person. Um, I think there was a bunch of challenges to this role, uh, working with children as much, uh, working in that improvisational style as much as he does. There's a lot to recommend the role. 
Uh, Tarek Khan, who is one of uh, the best Oscarologists I know, he's uh, got Richard Jenkins for Shape of Water out front to win. Um, I think a lot of things would have to happen in the race for that to be the outcome, but I, I like the, the prediction for this reason. Um, I didn't like his character at all as the movie began. I went, oh, it's a stereotypical gay uh, roommate role, and or not roommate, but uh, friend down the hall role, and he's there because her character doesn't speak, so they, they have to have some role there uh, because uh, she's a mutant, so he's got to kind of articulate the action. But boy, his character evolves in such a, a terrific way as the story moves ahead that uh, it ends up being quite a performance, doesn't it? I know you're not a fan of the movie, but what, what did you think of his? I was going to say, he is, uh, he's the aspect of uh, Shape of Water that I found uh, uh, the most unpredictable, uh, that evolved most naturally, whereas I felt that um, all, everyone else, frankly, uh, the, the stayed, were almost static characters. Um, I, I thought Jenkins and Jenkins is always so good and he was so good in the visitor. They, there's a great example of out of the blue nomination deserved nomination for a, you know, a classic actor uh, who's, you know, been around for a long time and deserved it. Um, I, if he, if he gets it, it would be the, the, the one shape of water nomination. I wouldn't <laughs> you would root for uh, you know, a couple of our peers have Jason Mitchell for Mudbound. You know, uh, Scott Nance and Ann Thompson have him down for a nomination. What do you think? Again, I was just so underwhelmed with Mudbound, and and surprisingly so. Uh, again, I was a big, big, no, big no, fan. Voter, of Keith, do I re have to remind you of this? Come on. Uh, yeah, it's being it's it's all about the campaign, and it's all about that. Um, so, so uh, again, I. I don't think in this crowded ballroom that that one fits in yet. It may, but uh, and I, I don't see it. Mark Ryland sure surprised us last year. He could be back for Dunkirk. Uh, some of our experts, uh, Tim Gray has him down, and some others doing our um, – Sarah from Entertainment Weekly has him down as a nominee. Do you think it could happen? No. <laughs> <laughs> What about? I think, it's, uh, I think it's a fairly slight role. I mean, again, it is. You know, there's a core of human decency in 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 many of these films, and Rylance is one of them. Obviously, in Dunkirk, um, in 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 a lot of ways, it, it's possible. I I just don't know that people think of Dunkirk as an actor's film. Yeah, I agree with that. Uh, a couple of our experts too have uh, Ray Romano for The Big Sick. You're big fan of the movie. Could you see that happening? I'd love to see it happen. Um, you know, that's also uh, a character who's uh, not the character that you see from, you know, everybody, everyone loves Raymond. Uh, it's a, it's different um, and improv improvised a lot. Uh, so a lot, some of the funniest scenes, uh, throw the truck, chalk at Jimmy, uh, all that stuff came out of Ray Romano. So un under, under those auspices, and I'd love to see it happen because uh, I, I really love the big sick. Okay, well, let's wrap it up there. Um, I, the, I think of all these races, we have one solid front runner with Gary Oldman, but otherwise, uh, and we have a possibility for, for, for an upset there, don't we? But otherwise, we have a wide open derby this year on all fronts. Uh, no, Coco wins best animated film. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Check. <laughs> Everything else is wide open. <laughs>